Hello, hi. Um, for those of you who haven't read whatever's behind me, uh, or no, it's not behind me, it doesn't say my name yet, um, or haven't read the program, my name is Jeremy O'Harris. Um, I am a playwright and a theater maker and an actor on occasion. And um, I currently have a play on Broadway right now called Slave Play, um, which some of you guys may have seen. Um, and I feel so deeply honored to be um, invited here today to speak at the Creative Time Summit because it's something I've admired and watched from afar for as many years as I've been making um, art professionally. Um, and one of the things I was really excited about when they uh, invited me to speak this time was about speaking some truth, some truth that uh, I haven't been able to articulate um, in a public space. Uh, at least not well. Um, and so I wanted to take this time to do that. Um, and the truth I wanted to speak about is uh, the ways in which I have felt invited into spaces and the ways in which I'm trying and attempting to radically invite people into my space, a space that is rarefied by not only class, but um, cultural literacy and uh, a lot of other factors that like bar people from entering a theater um, not unlike the one we're in now. So as you can see, I am dressed uh, a bit like a um, you know, company member, an ensemble member in a regional production of Spring Awakening. Um, <laughs> um, and part of the reason I did that is because I felt like this was a great example of one of the ways I've attempted to invite audiences who aren't generally the first people to buy a ticket to see a play to see mine. Um, I am someone who has worked in a lot of different spaces and have traveled with a lot of different people, and so my community is uh, a bit broader than I think the, um, the normal uh, theater maker who spent their life doing it the right way by going to an undergraduate um, uh, conservatory and studying drama there, then going to a graduate conservatory and studying drama there, and then entering into a life as a theater maker in a sort of siloed space where theater is made for theater people and the people who love theater. Um, I did go to an undergraduate conservatory, and I did go to a graduate <laughs> conservatory, but um, along the way, I was cut from my very first drama school in Chicago, the theater school at DePaul University, and had to figure out a way to uh, make a new formulation of what my path was going to be. And that involved me entering into a sort of seedy art world uh, of LA, um, where pop art is art, and um, drugs are currency that are hidden behind the walls everywhere. Um, and uh, fashion, because I worked at Barney's and a lot of other places. And so as I started to build up the community of people who I would want to be making theater for, those people looked more like people who would wear Tom Brown on a random Friday afternoon. Um, than people who show up to spaces in Keds and um, you know J Crew, which is also fine. Um, it's just a different community. Um, and I I thought that you know if I was going to be a public presence uh, making theater and trying to invite people who uh, wanted to be a part of that community, I should dress the part. I should dress the part that like tells them, hey, like I make this for you as well. Um, but that's not the only way I've tried to invite new people. Um, I've also done it via this little thing right here on my cell phone, which I hope everyone would get out right now. Um, because um, a couple months ago, uh, the New York Post, um, that you know, venerable publication, wrote, <laughs> wrote uh, a piece about my play um, that sort of denigrated the idea that like, the social media generation might be um, uh, interested in going to see the theater. That like my goal of maybe taking a sartorial photograph of myself um, and inviting people who are excited by, by fashion and those types of aesthetics and telling them the theater was also a place for them, that that wasn't going to work, that that, that was an impossibility. Um, and it's been lovely to have the show running for, I think, 10 weeks now? And to see that each, yeah. <laughs> Um, and see that not only did we not close, but we've, we've created an entirely new ecosystem of like who goes to the theater. The amount of people I hear from every day who told me that the first play, not even the first Broadway play, but the first play they've ever seen was Slave Play, grows exponentially every day. 
And that's because I said to myself when I decided to make theater, I want to invite you. Like, I want to tell you that this place can also be for you and not for just your aunt or your aunt's friend who lives in the Upper West Side and goes to the theater every Sunday. Because the theater is better when that person is there, right next to someone who, like, might only know Megan the Stallion lyrics as poetry and not necessarily Shakespeare, right? Um, and I think that that all starts with not only something that someone can see, but something that's said. So right now, I'm going to take a picture of myself with all of you guys. Um, hi. Oh, actually, I'm, my camera's gross. <laughs> hi. And um, I'm going to say hi to everyone. And I'm going to tweet this picture and invite some people to the theater. Um, because what I realized as I was starting to think about who theater is made for and who it's not, um, I realized that there are so many people who don't feel that they are allowed to walk even through the threshold um, of a building like the Golden Theater on 45th Street and 8th Avenue. Um, one of those people is my mom, um, a woman who is a hairdresser um, and a salon owner in Virginia. She now lives in the Bronx. Um, and who uh, raised the theater maker from age, like, whatever, to now. Um, and when, I, and when I, that theater maker told her, hey, mom, I'm doing my first reading in New York. I would really love for you and my godmother to come. Her first response wasn't, yes, I can't wait. Her first response was, oh, no, well, what's the dress code? Am I allowed to come in X, Y, or Z? And I immediately froze and realized that my mom thinks that there's some sort of code of conduct that, must, that, that she must be a part of that like brings her into my space, that allows her to be in my space. Um, and she also, the first question she asked me was like, and how much is a reading? How much does that cost? Like, is Baby gonna be able to afford it? Baby's my godmother. Um, and I said, first of all, it's free, um, because that's like a priority of mine. Um, and second of all, you can wear whatever the fuck you want. Like, you can come. Um, and I realized that uh, unlike spaces like museums or even galleries that have to allow foot traffic, that have to be inviting to tourists, um, and while there are also class problems in your spaces, there have been some radical things done to like invite people who might not feel like they belong in that space. And part of that invitation has been uh, allowing things like Sundays for free at the Studio Museum and also at the Whitney and a lot of other places. Uh, the, the other things have been um, having nights for just young people where people can come and dance and listen to things like Megan the Stallion while they're looking at like a painting by or a piece by um, uh, William Popel. Like these are all things that like have happened and been integrated into the space that have changed the topography and like the populace that like goes to a museum on a Friday night. So I've been trying to think of a lot of ways to do that in my space. So um, it started with me saying, I want to invite a lot of people who haven't come. And one of those things uh, was I created a black theater night for my show, um, wherein I invited uh, 804 black people to my theater, um, almost all by hand, like via Instagram. Um, I, asked, I tweeted out, are you a black person? Do you want to see my play? If so, like, respond below. And then over the course of three days, um, much trauma, um, I DM'd each of them a secret link to a ticket thing where they could buy tickets for this black night um, and just see the show with only black people. And that for me was so important because I realized that as a black theater maker, I only felt invited to the theater because one lady invited me to one when I was in eighth grade. Her name was Candace Owen Williams. And she saw me at uh, the Martinsville Public School, and she was doing a production of Aida, an all-white production of Aida. And she, <laughs> and she saw me being very animated outside of this public school, it's like our little drama program. And she said, Jeremy, would you like to come see my production of Aida? And I said, absolutely. I had no idea what Aida was. I, I didn't know. Um, and when I saw this white girl with uh, cornrows in her hair singing um, The Gods Love Nubia, 
I realized that I did too. Um, and I loved the theater. And from then on, the theater was a place for me. But I realized as I would invite more and more people on the street to come see my, my shows that no, very few people had had that like, active invitation, that active thing to say, like, you're invited to my space. So I decided to start doing that in a lot of different ways. And um, one of the ways today was to just take a picture with you guys, um, tweet it out, and say, I'm at the Creative Time Summit. Um, I was invited here to speak. And now I'm inviting you guys to come see Slave Play on Broadway, um, which is at West 45th, 8th Avenue, because some people don't know where Broadway is. Um, and I hope that you will see that tweet today, retweet it, and tell other people who maybe have never thought of going to the theater to come see a show, a show that might resonate with them, a show that might spark something in them, some curiosity, some interest, and um, let them know that there's a, there, there is no one type of person who's like meant to be in a theater. There's no type of dress to be in a theater, and there's no class for the theater. Um, the theater is for all of us, um, just like this space is. So thank you.